Throw it to him. All right. Good evening and welcome to the City of TK regular City Council meeting. Today is Monday, December 21st, 2020. We are almost finished with 2020. Uh, will you please, everybody, please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance and a moment of silence. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. You may be seated. Four more days till Christmas. It's already here. Can't wait. All right, let's start with item number one, which is a joint public hearing with the Planning Commission. Chris, you want to take it over? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, item 1A under the public hearing is to discuss and hear comments on the rezoning of tax map 650-00-00-037 from BDI in the county to B1 in the city as part of a 100% annexation petition. Uh, the application is the current property owner and proprietor of Brewster's, Brewster's Real Ice Cream and is proposing to annex and rezone the property to a similar commercial district within the city's boundaries. The property is currently zoned BD1 in the county. I misstated that earlier. The purpose of the BD1 district in York County is to provide for small scale commercial services and convenience uses. The B1 district in the city is intended to create and protect commercial centers for neighborhood retail and professional services. The recent 2020 update to the 2025 comprehensive plan has outlined land use policies that call for a pedestrian scale connection of commercial uses to adjacent and integrated residential and establishes Highway 160 West as a redevelopment corridor to fulfill such policies. The proposed annexation and rezoning are consistent with the future land use plan as outlined. Uh, staff believes that the annexation and rezoning is appropriate because one is compatible with and serves to implement the 2025 comprehensive plan and two the site is in an area identified for annexation. Uh, what we'll do is we'll take any public comment on the first item, let council comment, let the commissioners comment, we'll close that first item and go on to the second item for our public hearing. Uh, is there any public comment on the first item 1A? There being none council, any comments? Questions? Commissions? Any comments? All right, we'll close item 1A of the public hearing. Item 1B of the public hearing is to uh, consider a conditional use permit for a honeybee apiary on residential property, property located at 29005 Windjammer Drive. Honeybee apiaries are permitted by conditional use within residential districts subject to established restrictions as outlined in section 19-165G of the zoning code. A conditional use must be approved by city council before the issuance of a permit for such use. The applicant is the current property owner and is proposing to construct two honeybee hives on the residential parcel. The property is zoned R15, which requires a minimum lot area of 15,000 square feet and a lot width of 90 feet. The area under consideration for the location of the hives has been reviewed and inspected by staff and appears to meet the locational requirements as outlined in the code. In addition, the applicant has submitted evidence of completion of the required educational course. Initial review by the Planning Commission at their December 7th regular meeting resulted in a request for additional conditions. Number one, additional boundary shrubs to ensure that the bees will not travel into adjoining yards. The applicant has agreed to install these shrubs and number two, assurance that the hive's entrance and exit will be facing the interior of the lot. The owner has so stipulated. So with that, is there any public comment on item 1B, a condition use permit for a honeybee apiary? There being none, any council questions or comments? None. Any commissioner's comments? None. Then we will close the public hearing and the Planning Commission will adjourn across for a special meeting. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, sir. We will give you a moment to step out and we will start with item number two. All right, item number two is special presentations, uh, department heads. 
of the year, employees of the year, and year-end updates. We'll start with law enforcement. We're going to start with HR. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Mayor, Mr. Mayor, members of council. Um, at the conclusion of each year, we recognize two employees uh, as employee of the year. Typically, we do this during our holiday luncheon, but for obvious reasons, we didn't get all of staff together this year, unfortunately. Uh, but we also recognize a department head of the year. The employees are nominated by department heads, with one employee typically being an office employee and the other employee being more out in the field, if you will. The department heads also nominate one of their peers for the department head of the year award. While our, all of our staff is amazing and worked tirelessly for the city, we definitely had uh, two that really went above and beyond this year and I'm excited to recognize them this evening. The nominees were Anthony Ciarelli from our utility department, Eli Rudemiller from our fire department, Dustin Overton, Parks and Recreation Department, Shante Polite uh, from our Development Services Department, Robbie Sims from our Public Works Department, Officer Stephen Timms from our Police Department, and Joe Hedgepath also with our Public Works Department. Those were our nominees. Our first employee of the year for 2020 is Officer Stephen Timms. Come on up, Officer Timms. <laughs> we like surprising people. Stay up here. We're going to brag on you for just a minute. Stand up here by Ms. Dorr. So Officer Timms has worked tirelessly to gain uh, additional knowledge in the areas of computer forensics, has participated in the York County Forensics Unit to gain additional knowledge that he could apply here. He works additional hours creating promotional videos and flyers for TCPD uh, social media and is responsible for maintaining their social media pages. He is also a firearms and defensive uh, tactics instructor for the department. Congratulations, Officer Timms, and thank you for your hard work and dedication to the city. <laughs> All right, our, uh, our second employee of the year, unfortunately, is out of town on vacation and unable to be with us tonight, but we wanted to recognize him nonetheless. And that person is Dustin Overton. Dustin is our recreation superintendent, and in addition to overseeing the programmers in the department, he, is also direct, uh, he also directly programs our youth baseball, youth football, and flag, uh, youth softball, excuse me, and flag football leagues. During the summer months, uh, he also oversees the Beach and Swim Center operations. When the COVID pandemic shut down all of our programming in March, Dustin played a key role in developing new policies and procedures for our recreational programs alongside Joey Blethen, our Parks and Rec Director, and he worked tirelessly with the rest of the programming staff to put together schedules that allow participants to return in June for a modified season. Over the summer, he, he and Joey worked together in, uh, imp to implement our new registration software that we rolled out at the beginning of this month. On a side note, Dustin also thought he just had tons of free time this year and began pursuing his master's degree in public administration. Congratulations, Dustin, and thank you for your hard work and dedication, and we look forward to celebrating with him when he returns uh, from vacation. Congratulations. All right, now I'd like to present something a little different. Um, as y'all can see over here to the easel, um, some of our staff put together a, uh, a nice shadow box for one of our employees that we lost this year to COVID. Uh, our IT manager, Mark Slocum, uh, will be presenting that to his wife and family. Um, we had hoped to be able to do it tonight, but um, they're still very, very emotional about it. And we understand that, so we'll, we'll get that to them. But Mark meant a lot to us. Uh, Mark did a heck of a job in a relatively short period of time for this city. Um, he touched all of our departments, uh, really got us headed the right way and where we needed to be with IT. As such, we want to recognize that uh, going forward. And Mayor and Council, I'm pleased to report that we are now going to be calling our Department Head of the Year Award the Mark Slocum Department Head of the Year Award going forward. So we're really excited to do that. So now I'd like to present the first ever Mark Slocum Award, uh, Department Head of the Year Award. Or if you'll grab that bag over there. I absolutely could not be as successful as a city manager without the amazing department heads that we have here in the city. I think pretty much all of them are here uh, tonight, and I appreciate y'all coming. They work tirelessly for this city and truly give everything they have every day. This year's nominees, as nominated by their, by their, uh, their peers, our fire chief, Chief Glenn Hastie, our police chief, Chief Steve Parker, Janet Broom, 
our IT manager, and Dora Perry, our HR manager. Nobody knew the nominees. The first recipient of the Mark Slocum Department Head of the Year Award goes to Chief Glenn Hasty. Come on up, Chief. <laughs> Chief Hasty is someone who has established himself as a leader of not only his department, but for the organization as a whole in the time that he has been with us. His demeanor and professionalism put everyone he meets at ease. The organization uh, and professionalism he has brought to our fire department is absolutely amazing. This year was extremely taxing, to say the least. In late January, I asked Chief to start putting together information on the coronavirus, uh, on this coronavirus thing. At that time, we didn't even know really what it was. Uh, asked him to start putting together uh, reports. Within a week, I, I was getting twice weekly reports and updates from him. This was a month and a half before the pandemic really took over our nation. In that time, he has helped me develop policies and procedures for our staff so that we could continue operating at a high level while still making sure we were protecting ourselves as much as we could. As you can imagine, our firefighters, many of whom are here tonight, run a lot of medical calls and as such are coming into contact with all kinds of different people. On more than one occasion, they've had to go through a decontamination process at one or both stations. As if being a fire chief uh, wasn't stressful enough, imagine being a fire chief through a pandemic. Chief, from the bottom of my heart, thank you. Thank you for your service to our organization and the citizens of TKK. Thank you, Bobby. Yes, sir. So. Everybody can see, I still have one more bag. That's because this year we decided to award a second Department Head of the Year. So the second recipient of the Mark Slocum Department Head of the Year Award goes to Ms. Dora Perry. Whoa. I can keep I'm going to brag on you for just a minute, Ms. Dora. So, as y'all can tell, I can keep secrets from Ms. Dora. So, Dora has been with the city for, well, let's just say, longer than anyone else. Dora used to man the front window at Old City Hall and was the first employee I met back in 2001 when I drove up to apply to be the first Parks and Recreation Director for the city. So, almost 20 years ago, I met Dora, and, well, time has been a lot kinder to her than it has to me. She hasn't aged one bit, yet I appear to age five years every day somehow. <laughs> Ms. Dora works tirelessly for the city. While her work may not sorry, while her work may not directly impact residents, she takes care of our staff. From advertising open positions to onboarding new employees to making sure everyone's benefits are taken care of, and maybe most importantly, ensuring we all get paid every two weeks. Dora is always here making sure it happens. As I transitioned to city manager, Dora was always there supporting me. She is always looking out for each and every employee in the city and does so with a smile on her face every day. This year, specifically, was challenging. Not only did Dora have to keep up with employee benefits and payroll, she worked alongside of me in developing new policies and procedures. She kept up with uh, the ever-evolving changes that were, uh, that were coming out of Washington with benefits and tracking COVID time. Uh, mainly so we could get reimbursed from the South Carolina CARES Act. As employees became positive or in contact with someone who was positive, Dora handled contact tracing with the department head and scheduled testing for those that needed. And when employees did test, she would always call and check on them to make sure they were okay. It's my honor to present Dora with this award tonight. Ms. Dora, thank you for your dedication and to all of us here at the city. Well deserved. Well deserved. Very good. Congratulations, everybody. We were going to do a Mayor of the Year Award, but I came in third, and we decided not to do it. All right, so now we can do with our year-end updates from the department heads. So let's start with law enforcement. Whenever. Oh, I'll take, you can go second, Chief. We'll just go. Uh, what would you, oh, you got to do it in a certain way? Okay, we'll wait. The other chief. Oh, 
So uh, this is uh, the law enforcement uh, presentation for what's happened this year. Basically, I was going to just drop the mic and walk out with uh, oh, yeah. this is the end of the year summary, basically COVID. Um, it's been a challenging year. There's been no question this has uh, been the toughest year I've ever been involved with law enforcement or leadership and management. So it's it's been been challenging, but it's been good. The staff has risen up. I wanted to kind of start off in, in uh, highlighting a few incidents that have paved the way for some of the things that we've done in 2020. Uh, early February, TGK was hit with several break-ins over in the Lake Ridge area. I won't read verbatim, but basically uh, four very violent criminals uh, came in, broke in, had stolen guns, and even one of those stolen guns, when we got into a chase with them, was thrown into the backyard where a child found that gun. A uh, stolen car was part of it. They were uh, stole the car in North Charleston. Anyways, we were able to apprehend all of the suspects. Uh, thanks to Tim's actually getting fingerprints, we were able to identify all of the suspects, so that was one of the reasons that he was sitting up here. So that was in early February. Then in June, we had the same type of incident. Uh, we had uh, multiple suspects that were breaking into cars. We knew that there was going to be a rise in car break-ins. I knew that there was going to be a rise in property theft. I sent you all an email sometime in March telling you that we could anticipate this. We called out a couple of canines, uh, and we were able to apprehend three suspects. So very good arrests uh, that led to some career criminals uh, that have been doing this for a long time. Led us into the next, uh, next slide, which is flock safety. Uh, and that's what I want to talk about a little bit. What is flock self safety? So we, uh, I came to council, and council actually had heard about it as well, and, and we had discussed uh, license plate readers. And so since then, we were approved to add license plate readers into the budget. It was in the 1st of October that they were approved for that budget. We've placed them into four very particular areas within the city so we can capture almost anybody coming into the city that is in NCIC, which is the federal data database, to see if they have a stolen car coming in the city or if they're wanted. And uh, it has been amazingly successful. So uh, we got approved in October. It took me about a month to work through DOT and a couple other things. We're able to get them installed in uh, November. And through that, you see what it basically does is the camera picks up, it runs a tag, and then it automatically reads that tag and tells if that tag has been entered into the federal database. And right away, we, we got it in uh, November 4th was the first day. The second day, we got a stolen vehicle that we recovered that was out of North Carolina, and we were able to return to the owner on the second day of having it. On November 9th, uh, four days later, we had a stolen license plate that hit. One of the people inside the vehicle was a fugitive from justice, wanted for escape. He was also wanted for a burglary. His partner in crime that he was with was wanted for a felon in possession of stolen goods. So four days after, another very good bust. The next day after that, on uh, the 10th, uh, we captured somebody who had warrants. So it came out that the tag said that they had warrants, and a suspect was wanted for strangling somebody. Uh, and we were able to capture that person as well. So you can see... Just in five days, we've made a significant, uh, it's done well. Uh, seven days, uh, let's see, no, 12 days after we got it, we got a hit for another stolen plate and found somebody who was trafficking heroin. He also had fentanyl and meth. And he was wanted in several counties. Some of the other things to kind of talk about, uh, this has been, as you can say, I just measured two weeks when we first got it because that's when I made this presentation, so it doesn't have what has happened in December. 
but it has it has continued to be a huge success in my eyes. We don't know how many burglaries, what car break-ins might have happened, and we know that it's helping us very successfully. We had the Verizon store, somebody came in, they threw a rock through the window, went in and stole a bunch of stuff at the Verizon. We were able to get the license plate, and we're doing an investigation on it. So these, these are things that are helping us on investigations. It's not the solve-all, because uh, there's people that aren't wanted in NCIC that come into the city, but it's certainly going to help us uh, in investigations. Just some missing things that we've had. We've had a missing person that came through. We had a stolen vehicle. We've had other people with warrants and stolen license plates. One thing that I can say what's been difficult and what we I would ask council to consider is we have them on the entries of the city, but we don't have it on the exit. And it's kind of like a needle in a haystack is what I would say. When someone comes in, we have no idea where they're going to end up going. So we might search for an hour or two, but they might have exited the city five minutes after they entered the city. So that's something that I would definitely say I have seen that would help us in the progression of making sure that we're solving crimes, but not also wasting our resources of the officers if the car left the city two hours ago and we're still searching. Um, so that would be one thing that I would ask to consider in the future. Some things that I wanted to update you on is best practices. I wanted to make sure this has been a, a difficult year. Uh, George Floyd, uh, things that happened with that. I wanted to make sure uh, that you, council, as well as the public, are aware that we are doing best practices. Uh, we have something, and I'm going to kind of work my way up, but we have something called an AIM software, which if someone's in a chase, has a complaint, has use of forces, we track those, and it has a green light, yellow light, red light. And if you're green light, that means you're fine. Yellow light, you've crossed a threshold. Red light, we need to have a discussion. It didn't mean they did anything wrong. It just means they had a few things going on, and we look back and make sure that everything's going okay with them. If there's something in their personal life, if there's something more we need to look at, we look at to make sure that they're not passing those thresholds. Obviously, I'm happy to say everybody in our, our uh, department is green light, so uh, that's a good thing. But that helps us make sure that we're being professional. Number two, we have, we're the only state that has mandated reporting for unlawful acts. We have something called the seven deadly sins here. And if you create one of those seven deadly sins, then we have to report that to the state and the state takes your certification and you're no longer allowed to be a police officer. So that keeps us within that professionalism. I have to say the uh, we chokeholds are banned unless it's uh, deadly force only. Deadly force situation is the only way we can put people in chokeholds. Uh, we've updated our policy and training on duty to intervene. We're training on it uh, on a constant basis. We probably, I know I probably drive the staff crazy on training, but we're even upping our training in 2021. We know just one bad incident is a black eye to the entire city or law enforcement around the country, and we are not going to have that here. Um, and then you see I put social distancing, masks, COVID, PPE. We have been tasked. No one can have any idea how many governor's orders have come through <laughs> To, to my agency and what our expectations and the staff have been. And I know that they've had questions and understanding some of those. And so that's been, that's been difficult for us this year, but they've risen to that challenge. And we've definitely seen our, seen our uh, quarantines, that's for sure. <clears throat> In-house dispatch went live in October. That has been extremely successful. I've already had people that have written emails or voicemails saying how friendly when they first called in and how quick their response was. So, And that was not even solicited, so I saw an immediate change in that. And that's the actual dispatch room right now. Next, our new software came in on the same day. I don't know who in the world would schedule that on the same day as dispatch coming in. I guess that was me. I don't know what I was thinking. <laughs> Uh, but you can see, if you look at the picture, you can see we can actually track 
where the cars are. You can see on that little phone, if you can see the picture, the, it's showing where all the cars are in the entire county. So not just our police cars, but as there was a shooting, a guy got shot up on the face at Gold Hill and 160 this weekend, and they were setting a perimeter. They asked for our assistance, and we're able to help with that perimeter and set our people where they need to be. Extremely, extremely valuable to be on the same uh, records management system as the county. So that's been huge. Then uh, coming up, almost ending, uh, video bonding. I know that that was something we discussed in opening our own in-house six-hour holding facility. In 2017, 2018, we spent more than $36,000 a year in prisoner housing. That is not including manpower time, fuel, uh, maintenance for the vehicles. That doesn't include that. Last year, we spent ninety-seven. Uh, 9700 so uh, a huge, huge cost savings, absolutely, absolutely, applause for that. And you put that over years and years co to come and add that up, and again, I would say that that cost savings is probably somewhere around forty to $50,000 if you included the f fuel and everything else per year. So good job on that. Uh, some areas to just make council aware of that we, I told you, was going to be a concern. Uh, car break-ins have been up 235%. We've had 57 car break-ins this year. Uh, I don't know when that's going to trend down, but I don't expect that to trend down anytime soon. I do think that the license plate readers are going to help us to apprehend some as it's occurring. So that's been one of the things that we've seen that's uh, kind of, Again, I told you in March I was a little concerned, but this has been a countywide trend. We've seen this countywide. I'm just curious, what, what percentage of those cars are unlocked, uh, give or take? 99, give or take. There is always that 1% that they broke the window because something looked really good inside the car. Yeah, okay. One, there you go. So one out of the 57. Uh, calls for service, and this is my last slide, so I'll get out of here. Um, our calls for service have increased 39% this year. Uh, that is huge. That is significant. Now, I can attribute a lot of that to COVID, and I contribute that to a lot to, to, to the dam. Uh, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't sat, sit there and get granular with it. But I knew that there was going to be an increase in calls. That's not going away either. That's just population. I mean, and it's not necessarily population in TGK. That's population in York County and in this area. So that's, uh, that's it for me. I uh, just wanted to ask if there was any questions. Does anybody have any questions? I've got a comment I just want to okay. make. Um, thank you, first of all, for, for coming and doing this presentation. I just want to purposefully take the time to thank all of our officers. I know it's been a tough year. I mean, the, the numbers say it all. And um, we certainly want to keep our residents and all our visitors safe, but we also want our officers to be safe and be able to go home to their families. And you guys are doing a fantastic job and just kudos to you guys and thank you so much for what you do um, and, and how you guys help us look good. Um, but. I just want to take a moment to express our appreciation for you guys, and, and thank you, Chief. And um, thank you. hey, bring that bring that camera item to council because yep. you're, you're showing results, and that's good. Thank, thank you. you. Thanks, Chief. Uh, next will be Development Services, Mr. Tom. Good evening. I'm gonna give you a little update right now on the Development Services. Uh, we'll be talking about building first and then planning and zoning and business licenses and a little bit about economic development. This chart here shows the graph on top shows the total number of permits that we've uh, issued this calendar year. You see we're trending up a little bit from last year. These graphs are um, up to about two weeks ago. And then the, the lower graph is on uh, residential COs. And um, you can see we're at 130. And um, 
our budget is based on about 10 new houses a month, which is about 120 a year. So we're a little bit ahead of budget on, on those, so that's good. And uh, this first fiscal quarter, we've done 40. And I've got another 10 downstairs that I'm working on. So it's super, super first quarter for this year. I don't know what January and February might hold. It's a lot dependent on the weather. But if we have a mild winter, dry winter, it might be an outstanding year. Good Council, start. We, we budget on an average of 10 per month. And right now we're averaging almost 18. Yeah. New home starts. This graph shows a number of inspections we've done uh, this year and years past. Uh, the, the tick upward this year, a lot of it is the erosion control inspections we're making. We've done a concerted effort on trying to make sure we control those, uh, those areas. And uh, this is you know, the building and the erosion control. Let's talk about new construction a little bit. Uh-oh, I did too. Um, wait a minute. Does it back up, Charlie? Yep, yep. No, I didn't skip one. Sorry, I thought I skipped one. This is the Manor's Open Lake Ridge. Uh, it's also known as Pod H. These are the estate homes. Uh, we got 23 remaining out there. These are being constructed by Toll Brothers. Uh, these are seven, eight hundred thousand dollar houses. Really nice. A lot of them have basements. Uh, really, really nice homes. They've been a, a good uh, customer for us. Next, I want to talk about Cadence. Cadence is an age-targeted neighborhood, which means that they kind of go after the folks over 55, but it's not mandatory. Uh, I don't know. I'm not out there much, but there might be some younger couples out there. And we've got 13, no, 19 remaining. I should have made bigger type. 19 remaining in Cadence. In the courtyards, they are age restricted, which means that one of the, the members of the couple or the single person has to be at least 55 years old. It's deed restricted. Um, I don't know if y'all been back in there. It's back behind TD Bank. There's 38 lots remaining, and uh, it's really turning out to be a nice neighborhood. The gate is now activated, but if you pull up, it opens for you. So don't think that you have to have a key access or something. But on your uh, way out, it opens in, so be careful. Yeah, <laughs> good point. It Tom? only opens and closes one way. Is that an actual picture there? It is. Okay. Yeah. I just didn't know what kind of houses were going in there. I just... Yeah, they're uh, 2,500 to 3,000 square feet. Uh, 350 to 400,000, maybe. Uh, the developer on this neighborhood is also the one who did uh, Stonecrest Villas. Are there any amenities on that one? I'm sorry? A any amenities there at that one? No. no. Thanks. And then over in Trinity, uh, this is the first building of the townhouses that they put up. There's a couple more buildings up now. And um, we're, we're glad to see them finally develop in that area and getting some of that, uh, those lots stabilized. But there's 154 remaining lots. Um, I won't say anything more on that. Good idea. <laughs> Charlie and I are having some discussions on that recently. But anyway, uh, this is Windhaven. Uh, we've got 10 new permits for Windhaven, so we're finally going vertical. Uh, this street on the left side will be some townhouses. And on the right side will be some single family detached. And what's good about Windhaven, there's 16 acres of commercial associated with it. So it won't be uh, developed now, but as they get more rooftops, I think that commercial will become more, uh, more valuable. It's good to see Windhaven finally moving too after all that dirt moving they've been doing for a year. Right, Shane? <laughs> This is a rendering of Stonecrest 3. Stonecrest 3 is where the brewery is, and the uh, owner of the property named it Stonecrest 3, and the architects continued with it, so I continued with it too. But that's an artist rendering of how the property will look approximately in you know, 10 years or so when the trees are mature. And this is how it looks now. That's looking straight in at the brewery. 
Um, they had a soft opening last week. Do you know, ha have they opened? They are open for visit, okay. Uh, 5,700 square feet. The, the whole, for those of y'all who haven't been, the whole front of the, the restaurant is tables and chairs. And then they have about a 50 or 60 foot bar with the kitchen behind. And then the whole right end in the back is the big tanks where they actually do the, the brewing process. Very nice, very nice. Uh, it's the longest bar in the county, FYI, yeah. I asked the owner if he was going to be able to slide something down <laughs> all, all the way without spilling it. <laughs> <laughs> Next to the brewery is a retail strip, and uh, it's completed, and the first tenant in there will be a Topper's Pizza. It's about 9,000 square feet of uh, tenanted space. And there is an access road to the right of that building that mm -hmm. goes up into the Walmart parking lot, so you don't have to go back to the circle and up. You can kind of cut through. There's also a, um, a uh, indoor executive driving range type thing uh, started by the folks that own Top Golf uh, that has now um, uh, leased space in there as well. So it's one of those where you hit it into a video screen uh, kind of thing. So um, that should, they should be doing outfits for that here for too long. Yeah, um, so that looking for that takes out two of those two of those spaces. And I think they were trying to lease it out to a total of five different spaces. So. Um, good to see that building starting to fill up. Yeah. This is a, a building across from fire station number one. Kind of in front of that is Joe Harris's office building, and this is adjacent to it. This actually fronts uh, Stonecrest, and it's an um, office condominium building. So far, there's three tenants moving in. There's a religious group, a dentist, and a realty company. So that's moving along pretty well. And since I did this slide, the paving has been completed and building four has started. Building four is in the back because you don't want to hide. If he built building three first, it would hide building four being built. He don't want to do that. So he's building in the back first and he'll build in the front next. So the front building, number three, will probably be going up, I'm thinking, this summer. Let's talk about a little bit of planning and zoning. Susan, you want to do it? No. <laughs> <laughs> the planning commissioner, uh, they coordinated strategic, strategic plan with action strategies in the comp plan. They developed a public art policy. That was cool. Participated in the joint planning advisory committee with the York County and Fort Mill and implemented a mixed use advisory committee, small area plans for a regional city center and Neighborhood mixed use, among other, other things. It's just a summary. In zoning, they prepared a text amendment regarding the regulation of livestock, poultry, and beekeeping. We saw some results of that tonight. Prepared a text amendment regarding fences in residential districts and coordinated hearings of the Board of Zoning Appeals with uh, two variances. And on business licenses, we like the word open. Uh, we adopted the standard application to conform to municipal association guidelines. We process, we're processing pro approximately 670 license renewals. Last year we did about 620. We're active on the BL association uh, listserv. And um, we are working with a third party collection agency. The name of the company is Datamax. And uh, they're helping us find people in the city who don't have a business license. A lot of work with the school district and Walmart and some of the, the bigger companies. And um, the, our contract with them says it's a 70-30 split. We get 70, they get 30. And we've been, this year, this calendar year, averaging about $2,700 a month. Mm -hmm. Which, I mean, that's, I look at it as kind of free money. Yep. Because, you know, after two years, they become 100 percent ours. So this is only for a two-year period. And then, you know, Barbie can, can run it from there. Economic development. Uh, the, com the commission assisted the city with selection of retail strategies, and that's continuing to work uh, with, with them. Working with developers to identify and group potential commercial properties to bring into the city. 
identifying local firms that are interested in expanding and how to bring them to TKK, and exploring entertainment ideas to attract outside interest to natural areas of the city. That's my presentation. Anybody have any questions? Good job. Thank you. I have one. Yes, in your professional opinion, you've got so many years of experience. How how badly is Clemson going to beat Ohio State? Bookie says six and a half. Six and a half. But six what do you th your professional opinion? Three touchdowns. Twenty-one points is what I said. Thank you, Tom. <laughs> Any Ohio State grads in here? I hope not. <laughs> All right. Thank you, Tom. Uh, next, we'll go public works and stormwater. As Tim's getting set up, Alicia, I did want to uh, circle back on uh, the courtyards at Palmetto. Mm -hmm. uh, they do have access to the amenities in the Palmetto townhomes, uh, tennis court and pool there. Okay. Uh, they are able to, uh, they pay into that and are able to use those. Oh, cool. Awesome. Thank you for sharing that. All right. I'm going to try and be quick and as dynamic as possible this late in the evening. Uh, so <laughs> this is our crew. Uh, our fleet maintenance guys are on the left in blue, and then we have uh, a building maintenance, and all the guys in yellow are the guys that take care of the streets and all the stuff outside. Um, so these guys pick up a lot of curbside stuff, and we made 887 tons of yard debris uh, that was collected on the street and turned that into 127 tons of mulch in our uh, yard waste processing facility. Uh, we did some street sur resurfacing this year, uh, even with COVID. Uh, COVID knocked us out for a couple weeks and split our crew up, and we had a hard time getting things done, but we, we got a few things done this year. Uh, so we did uh, 2,435 linear feet of street, uh, which used 537 tons of asphalt on Black Hawk Lane and a portion of Woodholm Court. Uh, we also did curb repair replacement. Uh, and resurfaced a part of Windjammer that needed to be fixed for stormwater. Um, and you can see the other places there on that second bullet that were replaced, uh, some damaged asphalt. And we always repair potholes on city streets as needed. This year, this time of year, we get a lot of uh, requests to repair state roads. So we just forward those on. Uh, we did a lot of sidewalk repair this year. It's something we're trying to build into the budget on an annual basis. Um, I don't know if I'm going to go through that list, but we repaired a lot of damaged, upheaval, up, I mean, that's not really a word, uh, upheaved sidewalk, uh, root damaged sidewalk, and uh, otherwise collapsed sidewalk. And we still have a large list to do this year and the following years. Oh, back, go back. So this was a project we uh, were in coordination with, this SCDOT, uh, got the uh, dam road sidewalk done. Uh, they graded it out and poured the concrete, and it turned out to be a nice little sidewalk. So we did some landscaping. Uh, this was our latest project, uh, moving some larger trees. Uh, these were two big crepe myrtles we saved from the old police station, uh, and then we kept them. Uh, in our dump area where we process the yard waste and uh, had them come back, dig them out, and, and repurpose them in the circle at Hubert Graham Way. Uh, some other activities are we spread over 460 yards of mulch on city property. We pruned approximately 170 street trees. Uh, we did landscaping projects on uh, Living Memorial Gardens, Hubert Graham Way, Stonecrest, at the Clubhouse Pavilion and TEK Drive with the hollies. Uh, we removed a significant amount of storm damage uh, from several areas on a couple occasions and replaced several street trees due to accidents. The storm damage, we had one storm was particularly troublesome for us. Uh, took out a lot of uh, trees in one certain area uh, on city property as well as private property. And it took us approximately two weeks or more to clean up that storm damage. And that's all we did uh, was curbside collection for those couple weeks. And in that process, this left us several bare areas that we're going to probably be landscaping in the next budget year, uh, hopefully, uh, when we get some plans together. So it's leaf season, and uh, we have our usual leaf uh, troubles. Uh, 
in picking them up uh, due to high volume and wet weather and COVID and all kind of other things going on. Uh, we did have a computer glitch with the uh, pickup machine, but we got that fixed. Uh, and last season, we picked up approximately 18,000 cubic yards of leaves, uh, and that's based on the number of times we dumped the truck. Uh, stormwater, we j actually were able to do some stormwater projects, even with COVID and short crews. Uh, we did some pipe replacements on Windjammer. Uh, we did some outfall and inlet modifications on a few places. Uh, and we had some other projects, the biggest one, uh, this year was down on Zinnia Way where a whole a whole uh, hillside caved off and uh, we did that in conjunction with one of the builders out there and they paid for some, we paid for some and we got it uh, all put back together and haven't had another problem out of it so it worked out real well. Uh, I'd like to thank you. I'll put you, update you on some projects. We do have a emergency generator now at City Hall. Uh, that was a matching grant fund. We paid some and uh, FEMA paid some. Uh, the picture on the right is a tire machine we had in, uh, purchased with uh, help of all the departments that have vehicles uh, so we can change tires. Um, we also did some work at the tennis shack. We did major replacement repairs on the deck there, as you can see. Uh, the right picture is something that's happening in Lake Ridge. It's a typical road slippage in the asphalt that we have to cut out and replace. So we're keeping an eye on that and uh, trying to repair that as best we can. And you can see the green marks, so we have to cut out around that uh, and then replace a significant section when that happens. Um, and you are well aware that we had some dumpsters that were kind of an eyesore and we were able to build a nice corral for the dumpsters and it's worked out real well and locking the dumpsters up has actually decreased our trash amount by half. <laughs> so that's our update for our public works, stormwater and everything we do. Thank you. Any questions? You guys do Thanks, awesome. Jim. Thanks. All right, item three, uh, public comments. Nobody signed up. Did anybody come in late that want to make a public comment? Seeing none, okay, public comments are closed. Let's go to item four, which is the approval of minutes. Council, you've read the November 16th and December 15th regular and special meetings. Are there any additions, deletions, or changes? Seeing none, the minutes stand as published. Item number five are the committee's reports. Let's start with uh, Economic Development Commission. All right, <clears throat> the EDC met on uh, December the 8th. Um, we had a quorum, large crowd. Um, one of the things that uh, we had, talked with the city about, and Charlie had mentioned it, uh, council was how <clears throat> good our H tax was tracking, which is remarkable considering um, what we've been going through with COVID and everything else. And we uh, made a concerted effort to communicate that to retail strategies. Um, because obviously if they can, when they're trying to attract business to TKK, um, they can mention that, that our H tax is, is tracking so well, it makes us more attractive. Um, we discussed that the Thomas buildings had sold um, and kind of uh, discussed whether annexation would be a good idea. Um, the new owner is looking at 25 small businesses in there. He didn't think that that would be a good idea for them, but <clears throat> we did float that idea out there. Um, as we are trying to attract new businesses, um, we did mention that um, York has recently approved 1,600 new homes. Um, <clears throat> so those are people that could be driving over here uh, to see us and our businesses. Um, the Fort Mill EDC, uh, EDC is still meeting virtually. They have not started meeting in person, um, but we are communicating, or the EDC is communicating with them and hoping to be able to collaborate with them in person and meet with them by spring because we do have a lot of the, the you know, same concerns and what's good for them is good for us and vice versa. Um, we are uh, going to have Jim uh, Stalford reach out to retail strategies um, to try and find communities that are similar uh, to ours in size. Demographics can be hard because ours is such a unique demographic, but uh, to try and meet with them and see what they're doing to attract businesses to them. Um, we are hoping to have them on the agenda for the February meeting. Is that right, Charlie? Um, so they will be here and be on our agenda to talk to council and 
public and anybody else. Um, we discussed business licenses, um, uh, formed a, a, a committee to look at that. Uh, questions were, you know, should we amend our business license fees? Should we offer any incentives? Um, rightfully or wrongfully, we do have a reputation for being the highest in the area uh, and not being exceptionally business friendly. So what can and cannot um, the city do legally? So there was a, a subcommittee formed to do that. Um, we talked about uh, Chief Hasty getting his fire department on ISO level one, uh, which will lower uh, insurance, and that that is a, uh, another selling point that retail strategies and the city can use in terms of trying to attract businesses, and uh, said we were, that uh, they were going to make sure that retail strategies knew that, um, and asked for each member to think of desirable businesses to bring to the next meeting. Um, there were some that were brought to earlier meetings, and uh, one is trying right now to get into the city. Uh, next meeting will be January 25th, right after the council meeting. And sorry for the long update, but we had a good discussion. All right, thank you, Gus. Any questions? All right, we'll go to Planning Commission. All right, so the Planning Commission met on Monday, December 7th. Um, they re reviewed several things that are on our agenda this evening. Uh, Brewster's ice cream uh, and the conditional use permit for the beet. Apiary, Apiary, Apiary. Sorry, I'm. A, I knew that was going to say that right. Apiary. Um, so I'm super excited about this first application because, as you all are aware, um, this is our a new um, allowance within the city that we just recently approved this this past fall. So um, excited that we've got some interest there and seeing how that new policy plays out for our city and then. Um, there was some discussion on the 2021 work plan in which I sent out to council this afternoon. Um, please take a look at that. I know that um, we've shared that with folks in the past, um, but there was a lot, of, a lot more discussion this past meeting. Um, they did some um, reprioritization of some of the items, and, um, and thank you, um, Councilmember Overman, for your recommendation, which was added as well to, um, to the work plan for 2021. Um, on taking a look at stormwater ordinances and, and regulations around that. So um, with that, the next regular meeting is planned for January 4th. And at that meeting, they'll also be setting the, um, their meeting schedule for next year. So I encourage you all to attend. Thank you. Any questions on the Planning Commission? All right, let's move on to item six, new business Planning Commission recommendation on the public hearing items. Chris. Okay, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, for the first item, the rezoning of tax map 650-00-00-037 from BD1 in the county to B1 in the city as part of 100% annexation petition. Uh, we voted uh, to recommend approval of that rezoning. Uh, that was, vote was five to nothing. Uh, the second item, the condition use permit for a honeybee apiary on residential property located at 29005 Windjammer Drive. Uh, we also voted to recommend to council they approve that condition use permit. Again, five to zero. Unanimous both times. Thank you, Chris. Appreciate everything you guys do. I know you guys put in a lot of work for all that high pay, and I uh, and appreciate everything you guys do. All right, let's move on to item 6B, which is the introduction, let's see, let's see, right here. introduction of the first reading of an ordinance to annex and rezone tax map number 650-00-0037 from BD1 in the county to B1 in the city. The current property owner, and propriety of Brewster's Real Ice Cream is proposing to annex and rezone the property to a similarly commercial district within city's boundaries. The property is currently zoned BD1 in the county. The purpose of the BD1 district in York County is to provide for small scale commercial services and convenience uses. The B1 district in the city is intended to create and protect commercial centers for neighborhood retail and professional services. So this is Brewster's Ice Cream up on 160. Any questions? All right, I'll entertain a motion. I mean, I don't know why. <laughs> Mr. Mayor, members of council, motion to approve the introduction and first reading of an ordinance to annex and rezone tax map number 650-00-00-037 from BD1 in the county to B1 in the city. Thank you. I have a motion to have a second. Second. Second by Alicia Dash. Uh, all in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 It is easily unanimous. Let's go to six... See the consideration of the honeybee apiary. 
this out of the way. The consideration of conditional use permit for a honeybee apiary at 29005 Windhaven Drive, Windjammer Drive. Honeybee apiaries are permitted by conditional use within residential districts subject to established restrictions as outlined in section 19-165G of the zoning code. A conditional use must be approved by city council before the issuance of a permit and such use. The applicant is current property owner and is proposing to construct two honeybee hives on his residential property. The property is zoned R15, which requires a minimum lot of 15,000 square feet and a lot width of 90 feet. The area under consideration for the location of the hives has been reviewed and inspected by staff and appears to meet the lo locational requirements as outlined in the city. In addition, the applicant has submitted evidence of the completion of the required educational courses. Plain as day. Are there any questions? Any questions, anybody out there? For or against the honeybee apiary? All right, let's do a motion. Mayor. Mr. Mayor, oh, go ahead. Uh, <laughs> go ahead, guys. You, you, got, you got this one. Mr. Mayor and members of council, I'd like to make a motion to approve a conditional use permit for a honeybee apiary on residential property located at 29005 Windjammer Drive. I have a motion. Do I have a second? Second. Second by Heather Overman. Uh, all in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Unanimous again. And I just want to, if that's okay, Mayor, yes. just say real quick, I just want to extend again our appreciation to the Planning Commission for just taking an effort to do something. Absolutely. And, and Thanks, Chris. Take a chance. Um, specifically, thank you to Ryan Ross for his um, expertise in this level, in, in this area, and the rest of the commission for doing a lot of research to make sure that we've got a good ordinance that will work. So thank you guys for putting in all the effort. Ryan's Appreciate it. He's like a associate, like a member of association. He like studied it. Wow. He's or something. Way to go, Ryan. That's yeah. pretty cool. Yeah. I thought he was just interested in motorcycles. All right, let's go to 6D. A discussion and consideration of recycling regulations. Throughout multiple communications, multiple communications sent out through the city's various platforms, we are all aware of the issues we are having with recycling. The contamination levels are at a point where the county will, at some point, no longer accept our recycling. If we lose the opportunity to utilize the county's facility, we will be forced to cancel the collection program. The city manager is going to present some ideas for council to discuss and consider. Mr. City Manager. Thank you, Mayor, uh, members of council. Um, so as I, as I wrote this, uh, it was on the heels of, or on the heels of uh, several rejected loads at the county. Um, I mean, it's, it's getting to the point with our recycling as if, you know, residents are basically using their, not all, uh, you're talking less than probably 3% of our households are, you know, throwing yard waste bags, even though all they have to do is put them out at the street. Our, you know, Tim's guys come out and pick them up every week. They're throwing them in there. They're throwing loose grass clippings in there. They're throwing car parts. I mean, Things they know that are not recyclable. They're turning it into a, into a, uh, a, a secondary trash can. Um, I've had multiple meetings with uh, Signature Waste uh, as well as with the, um, with the county, uh, specifically the, um, the person that, that operates the MRF, oversees the, uh, the recycling facility for the county. Um, <clears throat> they are partnering together. The county wants us to be successful. They don't want us to get rid of uh, recycling. They've got some dedicated staff that is communicating with Joseph on different uh, communication pieces we can put out. Um, right now, we're targeting uh, targeting yard waste. Yeah, you know, that we're trying to find. Yeah, you know, county is working with Signature Waste to you know find those addresses. Yeah, you know, as as you know, a lot of times we can't. The driver can't tell that it's a contaminated cart until it's dumped, but they've got cameras on it. So as they find those those contaminated cans, noting the address. The county's going to work with us to send targeted letters to those homes. You know, hey, you, you, you're, you're contaminating, you know, and uh, you, we need you to stop. So that's kind of phase one uh, that, that we're looking to roll out. Um, the question for council tonight, uh, and it doesn't, you don't have to decide tonight, but something for council to, to begin thinking through. Um, as we start finding, you know, where the contamination has come from, as we find, or if we find, that these, it's the same households every, every time, all right? And it'll take us, 
uh, working with them you know, a couple months, you know, uh, considering it's an every other week type thing. Um, do we as staff have the authority to remove their bins? Yes. Tell them you don't have the option to do that anymore. Or fine um, them. If you're going to fine them, we'll need to discuss what that needs to be. And obviously, uh, to, to develop fines, you have to do a public hearing uh, and ordinance to, to create new fines, um, to suspend services, things like that. We need to develop a, a program. Uh, and I hate to say this, but it, it's a penalty program more so than anything else because we don't have that. So that's something I would, we need some guidance on. You know, it's going to come to a point where by summer at the, at the rate that we're going, uh, by summer we'll lose the program. Um, yeah, and, and, and that's, that's terrible because, again, you've got probably 97% of your households that are trying to do the right thing. You know, the occasional plastic bag in there, okay. You know, but when you're, when you're throwing bottles in there, you know, now all of a sudden glass is over everything. When you're dumping your, your, your lawnmower out into it, yeah, basically that, that whole recycle load is now going out to the landfill. You know, once they dump it on the floor at the MRF. Um, yeah, plastic bags have never been allowed in recycling. I don't know how many more times we can say this isn't new. Okay, this isn't, oh, since COVID, you don't let plastic, plastic bags have never, people playing along at home, listening, they have never been allowed. Stop using plastic bags in the recycle bin. It's not a trash cart. It's, it's getting very frustrating. Um, I will say that last week we had good loads. Um, good recycle loads uh, was, was the report I got. Um, yeah, tomorrow's another day, so we'll see how that goes. Uh, recycling is off the peninsula. Um, you know, so Lake Ridge, River Lakes, Serenity Point, um, Cameron Creek, those areas, Stonecrest. Um, yeah, we'll see how it goes. But by contract, after, after, uh, after three times, the county can just tell us, no, don't come back. Uh, right now, it's not just us, it's us, Fort Mill, and the unincorporated areas that are coming to the county. So it's basically the northeast quadrant of the county. It's as bad as it's ever been, um, according to the county. So if, you know, to, to, not belong, uh, to not prolong tonight, if council could maybe just put some thoughts to it, shoot me some emails, um, you know, as far as maybe this, this is as far as you would want to go, you know, some parameters, so to speak on a program so we can, uh, I can work with staff, put something together, bring back to y'all maybe in January to consider, that would be great. I mean, <clears throat> Charlie, we, we, we're we almost at the point of no return and we have communicated and communicated and communicated. Um, Heather's worked so hard at it and so disappointed at this point. I mean, I, I don't, I, I, my feelings, I'll be real quick. I think we've got gone beyond, you know, having to pass an ordinance and decide whether we're going to find somebody or whatever. If there's a way to identify those 3%, because we do know it's only a few people, but if they're repeat offenders and there's a way to identify them without putting our citizens at risk, you know, by volunteering to, to you know, inspect people's recycle, if Signature can do it, you know, if you want to send them a warning letter, send them a warning letter. If they quit, take your can. I mean, I, you know, obviously they don't care. It's not that they don't know. They don't care, but they're ruining it for everybody else. And I mean, we're a green city. So if there's a way to identify them and we can warn them and they ignore the warning, pick up your can. Between county staff and Signature Waste, we figured out a way to where we can start tagging and, and, and notifying uh, without having residents go around. Yes, sir. Yeah, I don't think we let we should allow 3% of the households determine the fate for the other 97%. Uh, anything we can do to identify those 3% and then take them out of the equation, I think that's the best way to do it. I don't think, I don't think that's an issue, is it? I mean, that's no. I mean, we're this close to not being able to recycle. I, I don't want to get this up. And so, I, do want, I do want to, for the record, thank the county uh, for working with us. Uh, Stephen Williams over at the, over at the MRF. So as y'all interact with the county officials, Stephen Williams is doing an amazing job, and we really appreciate what he's doing over there to work with us, no doubt. Um, okay, um, so we'll, we'll start putting something together to bring back for council's consideration, but as you go through the holidays and, and the coming weeks, if you think of things specific, please you know, shoot me a note, give me a call. Uh, be glad to talk to you about it. Uh, make sure we've got something because...
Yeah, I agree. We shouldn't let three percent of the people. And if you and if anybody got any other right. ideas, like Charlie said, email him this week or next week or mm -hmm. something. And and if we can think of some great ideas, we need to we need to keep this recycling any way we can do it. Mm -hmm. Agreed. Anything else? <coughs> Heather's worked real hard on this. I know Alicia's worked real hard, so we want to keep this thing going. Thanks. Anything else? Okay, let's go to uh, go on, uh, item 6E. 6E. Uh, okay, this is the adoption of the 2021 schedule of regular council meetings. By law, the city is required to adopt council's regular meeting dates for the year and notice it and notice it to the media. Our regular meetings each month are on the third Monday of the month at 7 p.m. with the exception of January and February due to Martin Luther King's holiday and President's Day, and in July due to typical special meetings relating to the upcoming budget. Pretty straightforward, and we need a motion for this. Alicia, you're up. Uh, Mayor, members of council, I'd like to make a motion to approve the 2021 schedule of regular council meetings as presented. I have a motion. I have a second. Second. And a second. All in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 It's unanimous again. Okay, that does it. So let's go with the uh, city manager's report. Thank you, Mayor, members of council. Um, got just a couple quick things, and then I want to uh, uh, spend just a minute uh, just kind of talk about some year-end stuff. But uh, we were able to do our holidays uh, holiday with heroes uh, on December the fifth. Um, they, they brought in $7,000, so thank you to the community for that. Uh, and with that money, they were able to uh, provide an amazing uh, Christmas for 11 different families. Uh, I know we had uh, one of our participants, uh, one of the ch children uh, is battling cancer. One family had just lost their home uh, to a fire. Um, and just an awesome event. Um, yeah, hats off to, uh, to Chief Parker and Chief Hasty. And there are two departments for, uh, for making that happen. Thank you to Walmart and uh, the business sponsors that, that contributed. That was uh, fantastic. Um, we had over 200 letters in our Santa mailbox this year, which I believe might be a new record. Um, you know, so uh, thank you to Ms. Overman for helping coordinating getting those letters to Santa. Um, I know all the, all the kiddos around really appreciate uh, you organizing elves and making sure that Santa got all those letters and was able to send uh, responses back. So that was fantastic. Um, our city offices will be closed. Uh, will be closing at noon on uh, starting on Thursday, Christmas Eve, uh, this week, and we'll reopen at our normal times on Tuesday of next week. Um, now, I just want to run through a, a kind of a year in review. Uh, we typically do this in December, and um, boy, what a year! Um, over the past two meetings, our department heads have provided an annual report uh, for their specific areas um, and council um, by week's end. You'll have uh, the full packet, both in uh, the full gamut of those, both in your drop box as well as printed copies in your box at City Hall. Um, I'd like to take a moment to just provide a, a brief recap. Uh, you know, we kicked off the year swearing in Mayor Pro Tem Machunas and uh, Council Member Ryan Richard. Um, that seems like it was about nine years ago, um, <laughs> some days, but wasn't that the beginning of this year we kicked that off? Yeah, that was the first thing we did, very first meeting. Um, like I said, 2020, yeah, yeah. <laughs> because you carry the one and it's basically nine months longer than any other year we've ever had. Um, we cut the ribbon and officially reopened Trailhead Park with, uh, brand, uh, with a brand new inclusive playground. Um, and then everything came to a stop. Um, but uh, in spite of the pandemic, uh, we still were able to remodel uh, Windjammer Park uh, with additional paved parking in the new pavilion. Uh, we installed new fencing at, Win at Winsome Park. Uh, worked with Duke Energy recently to get a new parking uh, lot, uh, new parking addition at the uh, River Access, adding a much needed 100 plus parking spaces down by the, uh, by the river launch below the dam. Um, we were one of only two recreation departments in the county that was able to put together a spring league um, for, our, for our programs, but even though we couldn't do it till June, but still, us and Rock Hill were the only two that were able to salvage somewhat of a spring season and, and get kids and, and adults outside uh, playing sports and enjoying the fresh air. Um, resurfaced, and uh, as Tim told you tonight, resurfaced and repaired over 2,400 uh, feet of roadway. Uh, finally got that sidewalk installed at Dam Road, uh, connecting Lake Ridge and River Lakes to uh, the Serenity Point neighborhoods. Uh, replaced trees on TKK Drive, began the landscaping project in Stonecrest, and looking forward to, uh, as March rolls around, getting that finished. 
Um, as Chief reported tonight, got dispatch services started with TCPD again. They've been gone since uh, 2010, I believe. So uh, over a decade and glad to see that back and it's uh, doing really well. Um, installed the first wave of the uh, license plate readers. Uh, I think the mayor told us that was his favorite topic now. Um, and that, man, those things are doing a phenomenal job for, uh, for our police department. Um, our new favorite uh, phrase became, the water tower's almost done. <laughs> it's almost done. <laughs> the weather will cooperate with us. It will be done. But they're, uh, they've got enough painted now to where they're going to start doing the, um, the samples uh, here coming pretty soon. Right, Philip? So get to the tail end. We just need a couple of warm days and we're fine. We'll, we'll, we'll be able to finish that thing. Um, the new CAD system, as, as council members um, Overman and, and Dash saw, uh, in, in our fire trucks uh, with, with, the, uh, with the fire department. Um, and then having all that tied in with the uh, with dispatch, uh, both with York County uh, Public Safety Communications, as well as our dispatch here at City Hall, or excuse me, at the police station. So really cool technology. Um, as council will recall, uh, the fire department got a grant from Firehouse Subs to purchase much needed water rescue craft, uh, which we'll, we'll have in time for the, uh, for the spring. Um, we're closer to getting Catawba Park started than we've ever been, uh, with bid packets expected to go out next month on phase one. Well, that sounds like an impressive, yeah, that it does sound like an impressive list. It sounds like a lot. Yeah, and obviously it's not everything that staff got done this year. But just imagine what we could have accomplished if it hadn't been a pandemic. Yeah, many, many days, as, as Tim alluded to, um, yeah, because of having to split staff up, we'd have less, less than 50% of our workforce here. Yeah, and the focus was just maintain. Yeah, just maintain until we can get there where we can all get back together again. So um, I'll conclude my report tonight with saying thank you to staff, all 105 full-time employees. Um, thank you for the work and the dedication that you've done, that you've put in for the residents here and for this city and for this organization. Uh, it has been a trying year, but man, I wouldn't, I, I'd put this staff up against anybody out there. Um, they, they really get after it and do an amazing job and I greatly appreciate it. Mayor, that concludes my report. Thank you, Charlie. Very good year. Uh, very more, much more fruitful than we thought back in April. Whew. I know the golf course is doing better this year than yes, they did sir. last year. Yes, sir. And they were closed two months. Yep. So go figure that one out, huh? And our restaurants, a couple that do call, contact me regularly are doing better this year than they did last year. Yes, sir. So it's amazing. Uh, hats off to all the people who have been working very hard because I know this has been a very trying year for everybody. All right, let's go to council comments. We'll start with Alicia. All right. Sorry, I got a couple notes here, so I'm going to try to walk through them. Okay. We'll go and get the popcorn out. Yeah, get, get the popcorn out, guys. And I'm sorry if I set, took a steal under your thunder, all right? Yeah, you're stealing. You can just, you can just join me. a lot of jokes. You can join me, too. I know. Well, you know, I, I, you know we started this. We kid out. you. We, we just did teasing. Well, you know, I just got the feels, right? We were talking about all the good work that our employees do and talking about Mark and, I mean, it's it's impressive, Charlie, and uh, I got to give it to you and your staff. Like, bang up job this year. Um, yep. Very Excellent. impressed. Congratulations to um, really all of our employees for making it through this year. <laughs> but then also um, specific shout out to the those who were nominated and then who those who um, who were selected as employee of the year, department head of the year. So great job and um, Chief Hasty, man. Thank you so much for uh, hosting Heather and I, taking us on the fire truck, showing us so much. We learned. I feel like I learned so much from just being there and getting to hang out with your crew, and um, really appreciate the hospitality that you showed us and, and everything that we learned and got to experience. So you guys do an, an incredible job for us every day, putting your lives on the line. So thank you. So she wants much to be a fireman when she grows up. I do. I do. <laughs> um, yeah, man, those things are uncomfortable, but whew, that was good. Um, okay, I wanted to say a couple things. Um, water tower looks great. I'm, yes. so, you know, so super excited about that. Um, kids even noticed it and, and mentioned it in the in the minivan. So thank you. Uh, can't wait to see that get finished up. What'd you say? Those are the things that make us happy. I know, right? Right. Uh, <laughs> And I did want to highlight um, the Dam Road sidewalk. Uh, that that big up job there too. I did drive down Dam Road the other day and saw several people using it. Um, looked like they were enjoying themselves. I don't know where they were going. 
uh, what they were doing, but uh, but they were using the sidewalk, and I was excited. And um, Roundabout looks great. Glad you guys were able to save some of those trees and um, repurpose those. So thank you again. And um, I won't go to like the yeah, yeah, well, yeah, yeah, yeah. They're they're going they're going from neighborhood to neighborhood. Yeah, yeah, it'll be fantastic. Um, special shout out to Model A Brewing. Um, congrats to them for opening their business. TK owners, um, great beer, great food. Get out and sp support our local business owners. Um, let's see, did I get everything for the most part? Probably not, but um, that I'll, I'll wrap it up there and just say to everyone, happy holidays, looking forward to a new year. Yes. Um, and thank you all for all you do. Thanks, Lisa. Heather, you're next. So 2020 has not been any one year, but I think that this year, while um, as tough as it has been for some, has really brought out the best in a lot of others, too. Um, I've seen the most kind, compassionate, empathetic acts, um, you know, in our community, and I'm, I'm so grateful to be able to, to live here and experience all of that. It's, it's really, really cool how we can always come together in times of hardship and make it happen. So um, congratulations to our employees of the year and the department heads of the year. Um, honestly, you all deserve an award. Um, you are really the team that does more with less than any people I've ever met in my life. Um, you take an already squeezed budget and somehow you squeeze another $100,000 out of it just because you, you work really hard. Um, You've, you've done a lot this year, and we're really, really grateful. Um, this city would not function. It would not be the place that it is without all of your hard work. So thank you to each and every one of you for everything that you do. Um, thank you, Chief Hasty. That was awesome. Um, honestly, it's probably one of the, like, I'm like, what is wrong with me? Like, like <laughs> I did tear up at, uh, at our little, our little uh, ride along the other day. Um, I feel like I'm about to do it again, but um, it was it was really cool. It was a really cool experience, and I, I really appreciate everything that you do. Thank you to uh, Santa and the fire truck this past weekend. Um, one of the best days in TK. All the kids love it, um, so thank you for that. And I'm really looking forward to checking off a lot of those unchecked boxes in 2021. Um, you know, we didn't get as much accomplished as we would like to this year, although it's definitely been you know, we have, we have done a lot, um, but next year we are, we're going to finish it off strong. So that's it. Thank you. Merry Christmas. Man, there just ain't much left when it gets to me and you. Um, <clears throat> well, I was going to congratulate the winners, but that's already been done twice. Um, nice touch on the Mark Slocum Award. That, that's very much appreciated by all of us and his family and everybody, I'm sure. Um, and I would like to say it's really cool to see Dora win. Um, to all the department heads and Charlie for what you guys have managed to put together this year is just incredible. Um, and, and we really appreciate everything that everybody does for us. Um, I, you know, Chief, I wish you were still here. I'll direct this at Spencer now. I give a man four cameras and now he wants four more. I swear. <laughs> um, <clears throat> that being said, I vote for four more, and we're not voting right now. But um, that's that's been a lot of fun, something great to see. Um, I was doing some some traveling uh, up until yesterday. I went to uh, another another state that won't be named, but its initials are Michigan. And um, wow, it's uh, I'm just gonna say it's nice to live in South Carolina, where um, you can choose to go where you want to be and as safe as you want to be. If you want to stay home and hunker down, you stay home and hunker down. But, I mean, we, we couldn't leave. There's nowhere to go. Um, so we stayed home and, we you know, we, we cooked. And it was funny, my brother-in-law told me that um, up there, uh, the, the few restaurants that are open, um, people eat and pull their mask up and they eat and pull their mask up. And that doesn't go well at a rib place. I'll just let you figure that one out yourself. Um, Lastly, uh, Merry Christmas, Merry Christmas to everyone. Um, you know, if you're out traveling, drive safe and be safe. And uh, remember the reason for the season. Thank you, guys. Um, so to make the third 
Congratulations to all the department heads. It's well deserved. And if you haven't seen that uh, display over here for Mark Slocum, that's really incredible. What a nice gesture that is. Um, the Toys for Tots chief that the uh, cart people did, 200 and something toys. Uh, I saw a dozen bikes or so. That's one of the th cool things that TK does every year, just like the riding around with the Santa. Everybody, I, we got to figure out a way to track Santa next year. Uh, I get too many text messages. Where's Santa? You know, I'm sure all y'all do too. I, I don't know where Santa is, you know. Exactly. There's a way, there's got to be a way. I bet our social media guy can figure out a way that we put a tracker on there and somebody can log on to something and see exactly where he, I mean, UPS is doing that now. We can probably do that. So because that way it'll cut down about we'll 40. Amazon and see what we can yeah, out. that'll cut down about 40 text messages for me on, on that day. Uh, also, the Secret Santa, uh, the great program. Uh, council doesn't need this, though. We, we got to cut out council next year. It's, I appreciate the, the thoughts, but, um, you know, we, we make too much money up here, I think, whatever it is. But I appreciate the, the thought, um, but we need to cut out. That's my vote. And uh, so I'm getting a lot of great comments on our social media, so congratulations on that. You know, we've, we've been thinking how in the last couple of years to get the word out on stuff, and you guys are doing a great job with all your social media. You know, people used to complain, how can we never know what's going on? And so now they're knowing what's going on with social media. So keep that up. Do more if you can. Do more. I like that. Uh, other than that, just everybody have a very safe and Merry Christmas and New Year. We won't be back until the day after President's Day. Martin Luther King Day. Okay, get those two mixed up. Um, and uh, just everybody be safe. And with that, I would like to make a motion to adjourn. Second. Second. All in favor, please signify by saying aye. aye. We're adjourned.